everyone. Hey, this is Jack. Welcome back to my channel, Traveling with Jack. Hey, today's a windy one. This wind is starting to pick up. We're expecting gusts up to 50 mile per hour today. So I took and folded up my tarp, stuck it in my tent, and tried to park my vehicle as close as I could to block some of this wind. So let's sit back and watch and just see what happens. Okay, now I'm back in my vehicle now. Hey, I got out and tried to secure uh, my tents a little bit better, uh, a little bit more securely. Um, the rain flap on the shower tent was uh, loose on all three corners of it, so only one holding it. So I reattached those because it does better with the rain flap on because it keeps air from going down in the top because the top's open. Um, so both of them are taking a beating. Um, the shower tent's been down to the ground a dozen times but it keeps coming back in the gust um, and my tent my garage is rough also so um, I'm hoping that they survive so we'll see so here we go well good morning everyone this is the morning after the big windstorm so I'm going to get out and check out my tents, see how they held up, uh, see if there's any rips, see what's going on with them, get my camp back together because I took, had to take my tarp up and everything so I could park closer. So I'm going to do that this morning. And of course, i got to clean the sand out of them. Uh, but before I do any of that, I'm going to check on my vehicle. Um, notice in the last couple of days, I've had a slow leak in one of my tires. Uh, it's down like six pounds this morning. It was down a couple pounds yesterday. And then I noticed on the same side, the rear tire today is down a couple pounds. So I'm not sure what's going on there. So I know it's down at uh, Fortuna Lake and there had a, a lot of uh, briars and a lot of thorns down there. Um, but hopefully I didn't pick anything up. So I'm going to try to check out my tires this morning before I do anything else. Get them aired up and then go from there. So I'm going to show you that here in just a minute. Okay, I've been having trouble with my tires the last couple days. This one I didn't notice until this morning, but it's a couple pounds low. My front one on the same side, it's like six pounds low, and I noticed it was down some yesterday. I'm thinking down at Fortuna Pond, there's a lot of uh, briars and a lot of thorns. Um, in fact, I stepped on one branch had some thorns, and the thorns are like pretty long. Um, it actually ran all the way through the sole of my uh, shoe um, and pricked the bottom of my foot. So I'm not hoping, I don't see anything sticking out of the tire, but uh, we'll see. Uh, hopefully that's not the case, but it's kind of odd that I got two of them that's going low and I've not had any trouble. So I'm going to try this new device right here out. I got this at Harbor Freight. Probably about four months ago, but I've not used it until today. It's an air compressor, and it just plugs into your cigarette lighter. It's 100 psi, high volume, and uh, it wasn't very expensive. I'm thinking it was only like $59 or something like that. So we're gonna see how it does this morning. And all I need is about two pounds in this one, so it won't take much. It's got a built-in gauge, so you can actually see. So I'm gonna test that gauge and see how accurate it is compared to the gauge that I have. I'm going to stop it right there because this one don't need much. This one don't need much. I'm going to check it to the gauge that I've got, my manual gauge. But also on this vehicle, it's a Chrysler Pacifica, it has uh, on the dash, it tells you your PSI of your tires, all four of them. It also has a warning if one of them is too low or too high. It'll let you know. So, let's see what this says here. Okay, this is about 34 pounds. 34 pounds. And that, this here said, 
Well, it was on there. It said about 35, 36. So it might be a little off, but I'm going to check it with the dash and see what the dash says and then compare. Um, I'll probably go with either this or the dash, whichever is closest. This one here that I have, just one I picked up at an auto parts store. And it goes, it's pretty close to what my dash says. So um, I'm trying to keep them all at 34 cold pressure. So that's what it's showing now on this one. So we'll see. Alrighty, I got all my tires aired up. The little air compressor from Harbor Freight seemed to do a really good job. Uh, no problem at all there. I uh, got them all aired up to 34 pounds. So I'm going to keep an eye on them for the next couple days and, and see what happens and go from there. I did a physical inspection just by eyesight and trying to feel around on the tires. Don't see that I picked up any nails or anything like that. So um, we'll see. We'll just give it a couple days and, and then go from there. So now I want to turn this uh, camera around and I want to check out my tents. I, I just unzipped them to just look. They're full of dust. Uh, they got full of dust from the windstorm, but it looks like they fared fairly decent. So hold on and we're going to turn this around and we're going to just check them out real quick. Okay, let's go over here first. Cause this one seemed to take the worst beating just because it's so tall. We're seven feet tall up here. And it's held up. This has been about the fourth, maybe fifth windstorm, but this one was by far the heaviest winds. Um, they were saying 27 mile per hour sustained and 40 to 50 mile per hour gust. So it looks a little crooked. And I think it's just because it was down on the ground so much. It was just laying on the ground through most of the windstorm. So finally I just put um, a big rock on it just to hold it down because I figured it would hold up a lot better that way from beating against the, the uh, rocks on the ground. But it seems to be all right. I'm going to have to go through and a lot of the lines are loose. Now that's the problem. That's probably what the problem is. Uh, tighten up all my lines and uh, clean it out real good. Because it's got a gap at the bottom. Because I just got a tarp down there. I don't have the floor in it right now. And it blew a lot of sand. If you can see the floor has got sand everywhere. It blew some things out of the holder up there. I keep like my toilet paper, hand sanitizer, wipes, everything like that up there, extra bags. So, dust everywhere. And this up here, I just keep my regular trash hanging there for my vehicle, like when I'm cooking and stuff, so it'd be up out of the way. No animals can get to it or anything. This little tent really surprises me. This thing here, I bought in New Mexico. As I was traveling across the states for a whole twenty-four dollars from that Walmart. <laughs> it's seven by seven. It's made by Ozark Trail, and it's held up through all these windstorms. It's been set up through all these windstorms, and it was taking a beating too. I mean, this whole top was collapsing down in, um, and it seems good. I don't see anything at all wrong with this one. Uh, then again. This rain fly, the wind was going up under it, and it's got a netting on the top, so it is full. You guessed it, full of dirt, full of dust. Everything in here, look at that chair, it's got dust laying on it. My cooler, everything in here is going to be cleaned. It's going to be swept out. So that's what I'm going to be doing today, cleaning so they held up pretty good. So, and then once I get everything cleaned, I got to put my tarp back down and get my camp back the way it was. Like I said before, I took my tarp up and threw it in there just so I could pull my vehicle in front of my tents to keep the wind from pounding them so bad. And then when the wind switched directions from south to southwest, I had to pull my vehicle towards the side to block them. So I just thought it'd be easier just to throw the tarp in the tent uh, plus, it gives it added weight. But, heck, for that much wind and the abuse they took, I'm satisfied. Okay, hey, we got camp back in order. We got everything de sanded. I got all the sand out of uh, my shower tent and my tent. I kind of split my vehicle out a little bit. 
We've got my tires pumped up. They seem to be holding, so we'll see how that goes. That wind, like I say, it was very bad yesterday. I mean, it was high. And um, I've got a friend that I met here a couple weeks ago. His name's Max. And during that windstorm, I seen him out walking around. He was uh, holding his hands up in the air, and I think he was taking a reading of the wind. So I asked him a little bit earlier if he would tell us a little bit about what he was doing, and he said that he would. So we're on our way over to his camp right now. And when we get there, we'll just talk to him about it. So we're almost here. I'll try to get this camera where you can see because of the sun. There's so much sun here in Arizona. No shade, it's all sun. Hey Max, how you doing? I'm good, I'm making a ladder opener. I've been doing some whittling. Hey everybody, this is Max. Hi. Hi. My friend Jack, I'm walking over. Yeah. And like I say, yesterday during that windstorm, I seen Max out walking during it. And we had some pretty good high winds. What was you doing out there, Max? Well, I'm, I'm a observer of wind anyway. I, I fly electric powered sailplanes. I look for a rising air currents. Sometimes you can actually see them in the sky. If you see a twirling dust or a piece of plastic just floating up in the air, you take your sailplane over and you get it into that thermal and you can climb up and not use so much of your uh, electric motor. Oh, cool. And I look up a lot. I always look at the sky. You never know what you're going to see. Something white right over there in the sky, moving slowly. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so I saw this wind and uh, experience out here in Arizona, and I bought an anemometer. Okay. And I'll show it to you. Hold okay. On. Yeah. He's going to show us what he was using, to, and what he was doing, he was measuring the uh, velocity of the wind. So we can see actually how fast the wind was blowing and how fast the, gu the gusts were up to. Oh, this is... So I want to flip this... Uh, phone around so we can pick it up a little bit better so hold on don't go away we're good to go okay this is a proster proster anemometer and i can turn it on and it automatically goes to centigrade i hit this button to get my fahrenheit but this has an impeller here and when you point this towards the wind it starts humming and it uh, has a sensor here, I think it's a little laser or something. And it will start recording the maximum airspeed or you can turn it on to average. And you can take, uh, even stop uh, momentarily, you can find out what it is. So I've had a lot of fun with this. I've recorded yeah. uh, different wind events here in Arizona and I post them on my Facebook. And I'm surprised how many people have ended up ordering these on Amazon. This was only $17. $17 on Amazon. Yeah. Okay. And All they right. have $37 ones, $27 ones. But this has a lot of functions. It has a backlit, you know, light for a night. Okay. Uh, it, uh, like I say, it has different uh, temperatures. And you can set it in a few different modes. And you turn it off by hitting the set button for about three seconds and it turns off. But it's just a dandy little thing to have, and it kind of either reassures what people think, or it frightens them because there's more, maybe more wind than they expected. Yeah, and yeah. Yesterday I started, it was 29.9, then it went up to 39.3, I believe, and then at the maximum we had a dust event come through here. I got out and I recorded 45.1 miles per hour. Okay, so we had 45 gusts up to 45 yeah. and last it, night. It was 80 degrees, and about an hour later, the temperatures had dropped by 10 degrees down to 70 when a cloud cover came over. Yeah. And the sun was blotted out. But this is a dandy thing. It's uh, quite unique. People are enthused uh, when they see that this is something you can get fairly inexpensively. Yeah, that's pretty pretty cheap actually. Yeah, it is. I mean, so it'd be kind of handy if you're interested in it. too, for 17 bucks. Oh, yeah. You can get a, buy, buy a three or four. I'm going to kind of zoom in so that's you can see. Anemometer. Okay. You have to say it three or four times to get it correct. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably say it wrong. <laughs> so, uh, now you said you posted some pictures. You took some pictures of yes. the actual speed yes, yesterday, I right? I took pictures of me holding 
this in one hand and my phone in the other hand. I took pictures of the readings. I'll send them to you, Jack. Okay, okay. Max is going to send us pictures that he took yesterday, so uh, I'll put those in this video so you can actually see what the readings was. Well, so. yeah, I recommend it. It's oh, cool. A, it's oh, cool. a lot of fun. All right. And you have to be careful one thing. Are you still recording? I'm still recording. They make these also for HVAC, air conditioning, heating systems. You don't want one of them. You want one that's sports, hiking, sailing, things of that sort, outdoor. Okay, so it'll say outdoor? Yeah, it'll say HVAC or outdoor sports. Okay, okay. So don't get the HVAC unless you want to be a, a repairman <laughs> for a furnace system. So we want the outdoor sport yes, version. Yes, exactly. Okay, there we go. Okay. All right, people, there you go. If that's something you think you might want, uh, Amazon. And when Max gives me those pictures, I'll, I'll put those in this video somewhere. So um, that's it for now. And we just want to say thank you, Max, for all the information. Well, thank you, Jack. All right. Say hi to everyone. Hello, everybody. And bye. Bye. <laughs> all righty. There you go. Thanks, Max. So a little bit of information. Maybe you do about that. Maybe you didn't. But you do now. So um, that's it for now. I'll be back in a little bit to close this out. Thanks a lot. Okay, there you have it. I think I'll just end my video there. Just a little bit of what's going on today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you give me the thumbs up. Helps me out a lot. And uh, like and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. And hopefully you'll be back for more. So for now, I'm signing off. And this is Jack from Traveling with Jack. And we'll see you in my next video. Have a wonderful day.